What was your your big break as an actor? Do you think it was The Walking Dead? Was that was the big one? Yeah, I mean, uh, you were fucking great in that. Oh, thanks. You played such a good creep. (laughs) Such an (laughs) asshole, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was so believable. Like all of it was so believable. Thanks, man. It was really good. Thanks. I mean, I I think that um, it was the. The, for me, it was the uh, the perfect the, the the perfect role at the the perfect time in my life. These things just like uh, they, they really they really could, you, you, you know married each other. Uh, you know, I I'd been busting my ass for about ten years before that and just failing miserably. You know, I think a lot of people think that you just like you know that, that I, I'd been doing it for a long time, um, but I was still really a, 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 a pretty big fuck up, Joe. And I and and um, I was hitting brick wall after brick wall in 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 my life um i was kind of a shit bag i wasn't i wasn't uh i I wasn't a good boyfriend uh i was um i was still um you know and having having episodes of 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 violence on the on the street i was still getting into street fights still getting into trouble um i was uh drinking way too much um on uh july 3rd 2009 um i was out i lived in venice beach and uh, I, um, every July 4th, we had like a really big July 4th party. And uh, I was walking my dogs in, in Venice Beach. And um, I, uh, I, I, I stopped because I saw there's, there's like a big house party. It was this thing called First Fridays in, in Venice where people could drink on the street. And I saw this older couple and they were playing the didgeridoo. Uh, you know the didgeridoos? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're playing boy, the, boy, the, boy, the, boy, the oh. That's pretty yeah. good, bro. And... Uh, yeah, so they were playing the didgeridoo, and they were probably like a couple in their 60s. And I saw this one guy outside the party who was kind of like a ringleader. He was dancing around, drinking 40s. You know, they're kind of like wannabe tough guys. And, and uh, the guy went over to the woman who was playing the didgeridoo, and he lifted it up, and he, like, put it on his crotch. So it looked like this old woman was, like, blowing his crotch. And I remember just, like, looking at her, uh, her uh, husband, and he was just, like, broken. And, like, I saw this couple, like, they had to pack their stuff up. And it was just, like, and I don't know, Joe, I, like, there was, like, something about that. Like, I was drawn to, like, I was supposed to see it that day. And I, like, saw red. And, like, right at that point, uh, that same guy, um, he he called my dog over. I, my dogs are super well trained. And I, I, I walked them. I didn't, they weren't on their leash. And I had this one dog named Boss, this great pit bull. And, He's like, oh my gosh, look at that dog. We were probably 50 yards away. And he called the dog over and boss went over to him. And the guy's like petting my dog and kind of like roughing up my dog a little bit, just kind of like manhandle him because he's a big pit bull, whatever it was. And I called my dog back and the guy, uh, the guy held onto him and didn't let him come back to me. And uh, again, man, I, you know, some part of me wanted this to kind of happen, you know, and, and, and I went over to him and uh, I grabbed my dog and I, just, I was like, boss, let's go. And I pulled my dog away and he's like, hey man, get off my dog. And uh, you know, one thing kind of led to another, but I started to walk away and him and a couple of his friends started to follow me and he, he pushed me in the back. And uh, I turned around and I hit him with a right hand and um, he got knocked out standing up and he fell down and he, he cracked his head on the, the pavement. And uh, his friends all kind of jumped on me. I, I tried to put my back against a tree and do what I could, but they started to get the better of me. Um, police came, and uh, you know, long story fucking long, you, you, you know, um, you know, it looked like like he wasn't waking up, and uh, you know, I they were taking him away. I was like sitting there, handcuffed to the side. Some friends of mine came. I got them to get my dogs out of there. But you know, I'm I'm on the side where there's police everywhere. People are like from that party were pouring beers on my head and I'm just kind of sitting there. And then they, they took me down to Pacific division and uh, the guy still wasn't waking up. And, um, you know, I'd gotten in trouble in, in, in the past in Washington and, and, uh, you know, that the police were just saying like, Hey man, like, you know, if he doesn't wake up, that's, 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 that's kind of that. And, uh, you know, I was handcuffed to this bench in the Pacific division. And I remember just really having to take a piss and, uh, you know, nobody was letting me. And, uh, they, you know, they were kind of giving me shit about, you know, what's going to happen if this guy doesn't wake up. And I remember sitting there on that bench that, you know, if this guy doesn't wake up and I'm going in that direction now, 
I knew, and it was as clear as any thought I've ever felt, that I, I was going to have to sort of get in touch. I was going to have to be the devil. I was going to, if I was going that route, all this acting shit, all this, this friends and fun, it's over. I got to go be the worst and most vicious part of myself if I'm going through that door. And it wasn't like something like trying to steal myself or act like I'm, you know, man, I'm nothing special. But I was, I was as sure of anything that that's what needed to happen. And it was clear. And I wasn't scared. I just knew it. But then my next thought, I just looked up and I was like, but if you can just get me out of this, and I remember just saying it, if you can just get me out of this, I swear to you, like I am done. Like I am done. And I will dedicate my life to my lady. I will dedicate my life to my work. And I will dedicate my life to you. And I will dedicate my life to service. Like, I will dedicate my life. And, you know, literally, man, I'm not trying to, you know, one second later, cop came by and said the guy woke up. And, uh, you know, man, that could have gone yeah. anyway. And, and I know, again, you asked me about Walking Dead, but... Literally one year after that, July 3rd, 2010, I was on set of my first season of Walking Dead. Wow. And, you know, not drinking, focused, engaged to be married, had my first kid on season two. Um, and, and again, man, I, you, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like so like profoundly like humbled by that and grateful for that, like so grateful for it. But I'm also like aware of like how unfair it is that so many people don't get that shot mm. and it doesn't work out that way. And, uh, but yeah, you know, like getting to then kind of play a role like that, that had a real beginning, middle and end kind of like built in, you know, it was, uh, and, and, and at a time in my life where I just totally stripped all the fat out of my life, the people I was hanging out with, the way I was behaving, I got ridiculously disciplined pretty much about every part of my life. And um, yeah, so it was, it, so yeah, I'm mean, sorry it's such a no, grandiose no, answer, but it's, it's Walking Dead, but it was also that time at Walking Dead and the people that I was around and what that, what that all meant. But yeah, it was, um, you know, my life completely, completely and utterly changed there. And I think the sad thing is, man, it's not like that was the first time that happened. I mean, I had so many times where I should have learned that lesson. 